Hey everybody. How's things? Um, I hope everybody's doing well and uh do want to say thank you to new subscribers. I do uh I saw I had a little jump there. It was nice. Um so thank you. And um yeah, I'm wrapping up these journals. Uh, I got a little bit of happy mail I wanted to show you guys first. And also, I promised that I would show you the rest of the Craft Consortium 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 uh, paper that I ordered off of Amazon. Um, <clears throat> let's look at the let's look at the paper first. Uh, so I did have I did have somebody leave a comment on the paper haul video that I did, like. I don't know, last week, um, where I mentioned that the seller on Amazon was actually Ecstasy Crafts, which is based out of Canada, somewhere in Canada. Um, and they suggested that possibly I could find the paper, the craft consortium papers cheaper there. So I definitely went and looked and, um, it looks like they do have, uh, a few different um, packs there, but honestly, the pricing is a little bit more than it was on Amazon. And um, although it was still it was still free shipping and stuff. So anyway, so just saying. So if you look for um, for any of these papers on Amazon, don't worry, you're not paying any more. You're actually going to pay slightly less. Um, than you would if you ordered them directly from Ecstasy Crafts. So I think that's cool because they do like, um, they definitely try to keep their pricing competitive on Amazon. So that's one thing um, I like about Amazon. Anyway, so, but there are some packs that I'm, I think I'm going to order from them that they don't offer on Amazon. Um, there's a Tell the Bees pack that that they have that I think is really cool so anyway I'm turning into a, a scrapbook paper uh, addict suddenly um, <clears throat> okay so I only ordered one pack of uh, stamps they they had some pretty cool they have some nice uh, uh, clear stamps that go with most of their most of their paper packs I'm talking about craft consortium um, so anyway, so I ordered these and I'm hoping those will be fun to use. I don't use stamps that often, but they were there and I thought they were cute. So, um, and you know, it's funny is one of the biggest reasons I wanted it is because of the little figure one stamp right there. <laughs> um, anyway, and oh, months ago, my good friend Sue sent me the, um, entomology um the tim holtz you know entomology set of uh thinlet dyes um so all the little bugs and stuff and um i had totally forgotten about them and <clears throat> anyway so i pulled those out when i got this the pack of stamps it made me remember that she had sent those to me so i tore apart my room trying to find them i did find them so anyway, that was that was pretty fun because I just um, I just bought at um, Hobby Lobby. I got a little sidekick, so I was excited to to find those little thinlets. So thank you again for those, Sue. And I actually I actually sat and earlier today and I cut out a whole bunch of those. So anyway. So let's look at these. Um, these are all craft consortium papers. There's five packs. Uh, the first one is the Emporium. And I think it's gorgeous. So there's four, uh, four sheets per design. And they're double-sided. Which is nice. Mostly. Except for that sometimes I feel like I'm wasting the, the back. Like if I like the front and the back, I feel like I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I like it when it's not anything that I like on the other side, you know, or if it's something um, like a lot of those 49 and market papers are um, real plain on the back. So they're nice to, to make tags out of. 
um, anyway, but isn't this a cool page? I love this page. It's slightly like pearlescent. Really goes with the stamps, obviously. So anyway, it's just really beautiful paper and it's a just, it's a really nice weight. It's not so thick that you can't fold it, but, um, but it's a nice heavy good quality cardstock and then all these little things that you can cut out on the front um <clears throat> and then this one this one is probably mm, it's my favorite of the five that i just got so this this is the inside cover i like that all of this stuff is usable it's that one uh, oh, this one is at home in the wildflowers. So they have different designers, obviously, that um, that did these packs. See, like I think this is pretty on the back of this of this one, and I think that's nice because you could definitely write on that if you wanted to. I love dandelions. Some people just hate dandelions for some reason. Our neighbor has a thing about dandelions like he will literally come and knock on your door and tell you if you have dandelions growing this is my favorite of all of the papers <laughs> I don't know it's just the orange is so cool and it's got that kind of pearlescent sort of finish too so yeah isn't that pretty and then this one is winter woodland Not quite as useful, the back page there. But I thought this one um, was nice, not necessarily, I mean, I just thought it, it could be used at, you know, any, any time of year, really. I mean, it has some poinsettias and stuff, but, but for the most part, I thought, you know, it, it was relatively season neutral, you know, but it could still be used like in Christmas journals or whatever. But this does have this double, um, it's almost like, like the, um, Johanna Basford coloring books, you know, <clears throat> anyway, so that one's cute. And then this one, wildflower meadow. This one's really pretty too. I like this page. This might be the one that has Yeah, this one has more pages of the little cards that you can cut out. I think it has another section of those too. Yeah, right here. So there's lots of those little journaling cards that you can cut out. And then this one also has that fold out in the front. So, and then last one is Woodland. They have some other packs that are beautiful, but a little bit too like cutesy for me, for my taste. This is gorgeous. Even this one is a little cutesy for my taste, but I, you know, I couldn't resist it. I do like the little, little mushrooms and little birds and that kind of stuff. This is pretty. I almost like the back of this one better than the front. Anyway, and then that page of like pieces you could cut out and then the back too. So anyway, so those are <laughs> those are my new papers to hoard. Um and then I got some happy mail from my good friend Carla and <clears throat> I know that a lot of people at, whenever I mention Carla uh, people go, who's Carla? Well, who are you talking about? What, who's this Carla? Um, so her name is Carla Frizzell. She has um, 
a YouTube channel and also an Etsy shop. And she makes beautiful journals. She makes um, not only children's kind of themed journals, but um, she does also like some really, some really gorgeous, uh, like just vintage style stuff. Um, but, you know, everybody kind of has their niche, right? <clears throat> and I think, I think that's, that's kind of where Carla Falls is, is in the, the children's theme. She does a lot of little golden book journals and I'm just like always so inspired by her, her little golden book journals. They're so cute. Um, I actually had her make a couple journals for, um, they weren't little golden books, but well, maybe one of them was for, um, anyway, for my, um, my son when they had their, their baby last year, and then also one for their older daughter who was like nine. So she made two journals for me and they're just gorgeous. Anyway, if you're ever wanting to make like a children's theme journal or something like that, or, you know, if you just like that kind of um, theme, check out her channel and just watch a lot of her flip through videos because she really has some beautiful um, ways of putting things together and some really great ideas about kind of like farmhouse, um, uh, country, you know, she's really into like ginghams and stuff like that. So anyway, so I just wanted to kind of plug Carla's channel, but also I want to say that Carla has been one of my biggest supports from the time I started my YouTube channel and she really has given me a lot of um, support, you know, mental and emotional support over the last couple of years. And uh, so, Carla, if you watch this video, I just want to say thank you for that because it really, it really has helped me immensely. So anyway, so she said, <laughs> I'm always putting aside books for Carla whenever I do the, the book boxes and stuff I inevitably I find three or four books that I, I know Carla would love and they have her name written all over them so we both kind of put things aside that we find that we think each other would like um and so anyway so she sent me a box of stuff recently and um just just a few things but some gorgeous things down in here that I, I can't wait for you guys to see but anyway so she I, I don't know where she got these but <clears throat> couple of little uh encyclopedias she knows that I love this kind of style I, I love like the 40s 30s and 40s um so these are little um like the standard quarterly review this one is from 1955 um an alphabetically arranged digest covering all lines of human endeavor so it's it's sort of just like a world report kind of thing right Anyway, but I love the binding. I think the binding is really cool with this little posts. So you can unscrew those. And then if you want to make a journal out of this, you know, that would be pretty easy to do. So anyway, so she sent me two of those. And I thought that was really cool. And I love the covers on these. They kind of remind me of the encyclopedias that I'm working on right now. Um, let's see. There's some other stuff. Uh, <laughs> some... Some of this <laughs> which I don't know what I'll use it for but I think it's cool and I I did some like amigurumi crochet uh, recently and I'm working on a couple of pieces for her slowly we're hoping they'll be done by Christmas this year um, but <laughs> I think this will actually help because one of the designs that I'm doing is um, it's a little ballerina so um, so I might use some of this for that anyway, and then just some napkins for decoupage and, and whatnot <clears throat> must have been, you know, from her stash of napkins. So that's cool. None of, I didn't have any of these. I don't have that many napkins left. I've, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I did with them, but anyway, so thanks for those, Carla. Um, one day oh it must have been a year and a half ago she messaged me and told me that she had found in this old um 
she lives in North Carolina. So there's a place that she likes to go that's out in the woods and with one of her friends and they were kind of out exploring one day and came across this old cabin that was like abandoned and dilapidated. I don't know if, if her friend knew who owned it or whatever, but anyways, they wound up going in the cabin and she found um, this chenille, uh, bedspread in there and she when she got home she messaged me she's like you'll never guess what I found and so she had found this beautiful chenille bedspread and I was like oh my god like it's gorgeous you know and I guess it was all dirty and you know like like a bear had been sleeping on it or something I don't know anyway so she was like so she washed it and she got it all cleaned up and she was using it you know and she said it was just you know it was, it was in such good condition after she washed it but she was going to keep it well something happened to it i don't remember what it was that she said happened to it but so, something recently and she decided to just go ahead and and cut it apart because it, it got torn or something because the fabric in you know this fabric is really thin some on some of these old bedspreads but isn't that gorgeous so she sent me some of it you can see some of it is stained a little bit, but I haven't even really opened these up. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, there's a tear. I don't know. I've never, I've never made, um, like a journal using chenille. I've made some pillow covers. I think I showed those to you guys on one of my, my like makeshift kitchen video, um, I showed you guys my chenille covers, pillow covers. Um, anyway, so she sent me some yummy pieces of that chenille. So it's just kind of cool because I know where she found it. And and I remember that day that she was so excited about it. Because we back at, at that time, we were all just like super excited about chenille. So, <clears throat> and then she always finds the most beautiful old quilts or quilt tops and she happened to find this one I don't know where she found it maybe a, like she has this one like antique store that that's like her favorite shop and maybe that's where this came from but look at this old look at this this old quilt top and she and she made a whole bunch of um, drawstring bags and I think she made these to put journals in that she was that she had for sale so um, I, I think that's, I think that's why she made these, but, but she saved this one for me. Isn't that cool? And it's feed sack fabric too. So it's, this is like authentic old, um, feed sack fabrics and that kind of thing. So, and it's quilted and it's just lovely. It's just yummy. So anyway, and I love it. So thank you so much, Carla. I really do love this. I might, uh, and I always need project bags now for my crochet projects. So this will hold one of my crochet projects. I may shorten these a little bit, but, um, but yeah, isn't that cool? So that was really sweet <clears throat> that she sent that stuff to me. Um, okay, so I have one journal left to bind and I thought I would do that one with you guys. Um, I've shown my crazy lazy uh, method of binding journals before um, but in case you haven't seen that one I will show you again. Um, anyway so I'm doing these with these all have five signatures. Uh, I pulled out some envelopes that I wanted to add into the center of these signatures. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of pop those in into the signatures where I want them. I'm doing them in ev one in every other. Not every signature, but every other. And on these journals, I decided to um, 
not really add much in the way of pockets and stuff on the inside of the signatures. Um, I thought I would leave that up to up to you to to do with whatever you want. I have a whole bunch of stuff that I'm going to add into these, but um, but I decided to focus my attention mainly on the outside page of the signature. So I just did some stitching around um, each each one of those just to, to create the pockets if they were a pocket page and then add the tabs and, and then an extra pocket on the outside of the front of that signature. So um, <clears throat> anyway, so I added my envelopes. Okay, so I just kind of scrunch them together and make sure that they're all even. Okay. And then I'll take open the open the cover up. Situated like that. Okay, make sure that they're not sticking out the bottom or the top. Okay, and then <clears throat> I'll use a Sharpie. And I'm just going to take my Sharpie and just make a little dot on the spine of each signature that's about in the center. And then I'm going to eyeball down about oh, maybe an inch and a half and make another dot on each signature on the top and then up about an inch and a half on each signature on the bottom. If the paper is really dark that I'm making my dot on, I'll kind of make my dot a little bit bigger, you know. Okay, so let it leave everything sitting there like that. Make sure I'm not moving everything around. And then I'll just take a pencil and very lightly make a line, just very, very lightly. just following those dots and I'm just making a very light little line okay and then I'll take my stack of signatures turn it upside down set them in a in a stack over there okay and then make sure I've got my cover right side up double check that and then I'm just gonna eyeball since it's five signatures I know that I have one that's gonna be right in the center and this is why I like to do odd number um, odd numbers of signatures. So and then I'll just make a little dot right in the center. And then just, you know, really, I just eyeball this, make another little dot right in the center and another one right in the center. Okay. And then I know I need two more on each side. So I'm going to go as far over as I think the edge of my sp of my spine is right so it's going to be right about there i want to make sure that i'm not um i'm not going to be putting a hole on this part of the spine i want to make sure that it's on that part of the spine i'm not i'm not drawing on that but i'm just showing you um and i have done that before accidentally where where i put <clears throat> my first signature too far over and it winds up coming out like right here and you definitely don't want that so I usually will kind of fold this up to make that first dot to be sure that I'm not putting it there okay so I know where it is now and I actually did some inking on this which kind of helps me with you know guiding guiding that anyway so then it's just a matter of eyeballing right in the middle of those two dots okay so this one I know it's right about there this one's right about there and then I just need to go right in the center so you don't need to measure anything don't need to fret about making a template or having some kind of special you know book cradle or whatever to to hold things together if I was doing a book where I was like trying to make it like down like a professional I probably would would do that you know but 
<clears throat> this is a junk journal and it doesn't have to be exactly perfect anyway so i just got i just have a piece of foam this is like three thick pieces of fun foam that i hot glued together a long time ago i've been using the same piece of foam for a really long time and then i'm just going to punch all my holes with my awl Okay, all my holes punched, and then I use a, uh, this is not wax linen, it's waxed cotton um, thread. I buy it on Amazon, and I've, I've got it in maybe 12 colors, um, and I think it was like $7.99 per roll, and I think it was like three or four hundred yards per roll so it's not a bad deal and i i mean these have lasted me a really long time um anyway so i just pull off about oh that much <laughs> if i'm doing like a three hole um pamphlet stitch which is what i'm doing on these okay so i'll pull off enough for like three signatures it's just string. If I accidentally pull off too much, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't put too much thought into measuring how much string I use, but I, I don't like to have more than enough for like three signatures, uh, threaded at one time, just because it becomes too long and it's too hard to, to deal with. So I plan on threading my needle at least twice for each book. Sometimes I'll just cut one piece for each signature and then um, I just thread my needle real quick, you know, in between each signature. So, <clears throat> so I've got my stack of signatures off to the left and then I've got my cover sitting right here. I've got my foam, keep my all, um, my threaded, <laughs> this needle's all bent, it's kind of funny, um, and then my scissors. So I don't need any clips or paper clips or um you know anything to hold things together i'm just going to rely on my hands and i'm just going to try to be careful in the way i do things so that i'm not moving my pages around okay so i'm going to punch my holes where i've made those little dots with the sharpie okay and then i'm going to poke my awl down into the center one to hold it steady while i grab the whole stack and turn it over and i don't take the all out until i've got it firmly in my hand and see i'm, hold I'm making sure that i'm holding on to the envelope too and then i'm just going to work my needle into the center kind of let it rest on my hand like this holding the pages I'm gonna find my first hole the furthest to the right because I'm gonna start with the back signature first okay and then I'm just making sure that I'm hanging on to everything as I pull this through okay so I don't need too much string since this is waxed thread it actually is pretty easy to tie it with a shorter you know shorter piece so then I just come in through that top hole, find my, find my top hole in the signature, which happens to be through the envelope. Pull that through. Lay it, lay it down. I'm just really trying to make sure that I'm not shifting the positioning of the paper. So then when I get to the second the the bottom hole i usually take my awl and i just punch it through one time as i'm hanging on to those pages and that just kind of realigns everything just in case they shifted ever so slightly okay and then i'm gonna put my needle through that bottom hole holding on to everything so i've got my thumb here i've got my 
index finger here and I've got my middle finger here holding everything together. Okay, and then back up through that center hole. I don't pull anything tight at this point because I need to be able to see what's going on in, you know, inside here. Okay, and then come back up through. Okay, and then I can cut this. And I'll pull both of these threads up together. And sometimes when you go back up through that second or through that center hole when you come back in, sometimes you'll split through your string. So if that happens, you know, you've I've stitched through the string itself. So I just need to kind of separate those and I use the awl to do that. And then I just give a gentle tug on each one of these just to be sure that I have everything kind of snugged up. And then I want to make sure that <clears throat> one string is on that side of the center and one is on this side. Okay, because I'm going to tie this around that center string. And that just keeps everything from moving around and keeps it in place. Okay, so I cut that, leave about half an inch, and then this envelope is going to get sealed up. So, so I don't leave the strings long. Okay, so that's one. Let's do it again. Want to? Okay, take my second signature, open it up. Make sure I'm holding everything without shifting it. Punch my holes. Leave it in there for this for that center one until I whoops. <laughs> until I flip it. through the center hole holding everything together I'm letting the needle sort of hold everything in place at this point and then I go in through my the middle hole pull this through so I've got oh maybe six inches and through the back through the top hole in the signature. I don't want to pull this really tight. I, I you know, because I still need to be able to see what I'm doing when I come back through that center. I, I realign my holes with the awl on that bottom hole again. Poke through. It just makes it, just makes it easier to just kind of realign those with the all okay pull that through and see this is loose doesn't have to be snug yet through that hole and back through the center now I can cut my string see if I yeah, and I stitched through the string again, so I just need to just need to pull that out, kind of untangle them basically. Still need to make sure I've got one on each side of the center string. Just give it a light tug. You don't want to pull this super tight. It doesn't have to be super tight. It just needs to be tight enough. This uh, this string does not stretch, so over time it's not gonna like loosen up you know um, and then on my center signature on my in the center of the signatures where I don't have uh, an envelope I usually leave these strings longer just in case whoever uh, buys the journal <clears throat> in case they want to hang something on there usually I try to cut it so that they don't stick out past the bottom of the page though okay <clears throat> one more 
<laughs> Should we do it again? Okay, so hold everything together. Put my hand in there. Just flip it over gently. Lay it on top of my foam. Poke my top hole. Poke my bottom hole. My center hole. I leave it. Leave it until I've got my needle handy. And make sure I pick up everything this time. Flip it around. Sometimes the um, if the awl is going like sideways like that, it'll cause the pages to be off center. Like it'll make the holes kind of at an angle. So like I like to make sure that that's like very uh, that that's a good like 90 degree angle instead of like like that or like that. You know what I mean? Just make sure that that's a nice 90 degree angle before you pull the all out. And then actually you should be able to see through that hole right there. Kind of just letting this rest on my hand with the needle through that second hole. And through the second, through the center hole again. And I mean, if you have teeny hands or whatever, and you need to clip things together, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just, I just kind of got to the point where I don't like hassling with it. You know, it just seems like it just goes faster for me if I just... If I just hold on to stuff, you know, straighten up my, my holes here in that bottom hole. And make sure you're going into the right holes in your spine because there's nothing wrong. There's nothing worse than stitching a signature into the wrong holes. Well, I guess there's a lot of things that are worse than that, but you know what I mean? Cut my string and then I'm going to pull these both up together to see if I have them. Yeah. And it's almost like every time I've stitched through one. So it's not the end of the world if you do that. You just have to just have to pull them through and have some kind of pokey tool so you can kind of get them apart, you know. Anyway, and then just give each string a little bit of a tug. Sometimes I'll check and make sure that these are, you know, there's not like a big loop or something. And the nice thing about this waxed thread is that it's just really easy to tie it and it stays put, you know, um, you don't have to like worry about putting your finger in the center and, you know, to tie the knot. So anyway, so that's how, that's how I'm going to do these last two signatures. And, um, and then I think, I think <clears throat> I'm going to do, um, I think I want to add some, uh, eyelets on the tabs and maybe some kind of little charm or something on the tabs. Don't think I'm going to use much in the way of fabric in these. I think, I think, uh, I'll leave that up to you to whoever winds up with the journal. Um, but I am going to do like a special, I have some items that I've set aside to use uh, for the charms on these. So I'll do that with you guys too on video. So see, I'm just making sure that this, that this is straight so that when I pull that out, I can actually see through that hole. And that just makes it really easy to get my needle in there. So it just becomes kind of mindless really. And I honestly, I honestly find a lot of satisfaction in binding, you know, 12 journals in an evening. I just think it's, and it doesn't even take me that long anymore. See, if I don't straighten these out, 
I just ha always have a hard time getting my needle back through those holes. So. <clears throat> See that one, see there's a lot of slack in, in my string right there. The other thing too is I try not to put too many pages in my signatures too. Like, especially if you have pages that, like papers that are all different weights or, you know, like things that are slippery or whatever, that does make it more challenging. So to be really honest with you, like <clears throat> if I have a lot of different papers that I want to put into a journal, rather than thinking it's easier to use fewer signatures, um... I've learned that it's a lot easier to make more signatures with fewer pages because they're just way easier to keep control of, you know, and like this method that I use with holding everything just in my hand is way more difficult with a lot of pages, you know, like these signatures are relatively thin. There's not, there's not a ton of pages in these. Um, I probably could have s even split this into seven signatures and, and that would have made it even easier, you know, anyway, but I can manage with, with what it is. So, okay. So that's it. I just wanted to do a quick little video and show you guys my little crazy, lazy, um, binding method again. And, uh, the happy mail from Carla. I will leave a link in the description to her channel and subscribe to her channel if, if you don't, if you don't mind, because I really do think, well, I shouldn't say it like that, but you know what I mean? It, she just really has a neat style and she is, she is one of my best friends. So, um, <clears throat> let's show her some love. And, uh, yeah, she also has really good stash buster kind of things every once in a while. She's kind of a, uh, She's kind of into paper, too. <laughs> anyway. Okay, guys. I love you. Talk to you soon. And these will probably be ready. I'll probably have these journals done mm, probably tomorrow sometime. So I'm hoping that maybe I can get them listed on Sunday. So we'll see. Maybe even tomorrow. Who knows? Okay. Love you guys. Bye for now.